nutrients are inside of those carbohydrates that you think is going to end up as glycogen is not whatever you think is going to end up as glycogen. So you want the food that's going to end up and metabolize more internally to your body because it knows what to do with it. So if the idea is eating bread because it's been in your diet for a long time, right? What was there before bread, before we farmed wheat? Plants. So then if the thought is, well, eat what you've always eaten because your body really knows what to do with it. Awesome. Go back one more step. And then you're totally there. When you go back one more step, those people live to 35. I mean, we're living to 95. Oh, that's, that's so, totally a great question. And, and I mean, I don't know if you know the comedian John Burnett, he used to live, but he says salad is a promissory note that more food is to come. I mean, you can't be full on a bowl of salad. You're, you're hungry 35 minutes later. Right, no, exactly. No. Exactly. So, so what are you going to do? You can't eat three bowls of salad. I mean, you can eat three bowls of salad every night, but, but that's not what I don't think so. I mean, I haven't been to the formal lab. Exactly. Right. So what you're really saying, I'm, I'm hearing a few things. One, salad is not satiating. Right? It's not sustainable. You're saying a salad, I need more stuff. Okay? The other point that you were making is that if you go back one more step, they only live to 35. Is that kind of the idea? There was this dentist. His name was Francis Potch. He ran this whole study. It was the longest study ever ever on cooked food versus raw food. Okay. I have the original book from like 1929 that I took from Hopkins Medical Library and then I bought them a copy on my So anyway, I kind of got an original book so I know what's happening. It's from this research. The reason people really only live to 35 is because of sanitary issues and clean water. Clean water and sanitary issues jump everyone's life expectancy. Indigenous tribes, when you go to where these people are living and eating what they've always eaten, where they have no technology, they're living way past 35. Way past 35. And they haven't changed in millennia. Okay, so both of those things kind of give a different picture. You can pick data to support that. Like, there are people who have been living and never changed their ways and live way past 35. Salad, is it satiated? Salad is not satiated, but I'm not saying that it is. I'm saying that there are a lot of resources out there that can give you a lot of variety. And when you asked for IBS, one of the first things that I said was we can do a salad, not salad. So there are a lot of things that you can eat that are really good for you, that are not just salad. There are root vegetables, there are beets, there are carrots, there are different ways of doing those. There are cutting up carrots, putting some olive oil in it, putting it in the oven, and pulling it out so it almost feels like a french fry. There's cutting up sweet potato french fries and making your own french fries. That's gluten free. And that's a carbohydrate. I'm not saying live off of salad. And believe me, I don't live off of salad. So if I led you in that direction, I do apologize. But in no way do I mean that. One of my favorite meals this week was homemade sweet potato french fries and burgers. That's gluten free. Except for the bun. I didn't eat one. <laughs> but you can totally wrap it in lettuce. So I'll tell you some personal knowledge. I love crunchy food because I grew up eating chips. So I need to eat things with a crunch. So I would actually love to take a piece of iceberg lettuce and wrap it around a burger because it would crunch and I would feel like I'm eating something. So there's all sorts of different ways to play with it. But I don't know many people in the US who would turn down sweet potato french fries. Totally gluten free. What I'm saying is don't buy into the fat. Don't buy into all that I can eat as a salad if I'm not eating fat. I'm totally saying that there's a lot more to that. That's not a salad. Those are beets. You can cut up beets and put it over something. And you could steam the beets, make them soft, cut them up, then reheat them on a stove with a little bit of goat cheese toast some pine nuts, put it in there, toast some pecans and put it on, then you have crunchy pine nuts, beet salad with goat cheese. So as a salad, I also know that as a cowboy breakfast. Just throw a bunch of food together and then eat it. So that's, I mean, salad doesn't have to mean lettuce. It's just how you layer the food and put that together. I can play
plug in some resources. If you type in gluten-free in Google or Facebook, you'll get some good resources because people are getting smarter. But what I'm also trying to share with you is where things are out of control and where you'll get lost, right? Where you'll see on these websites that they're trying to sell you snake oil. They're trying to sell you that. Well, don't eat that salad. Eat this thing. Eat this thing that your body has no idea what the heck it is. But there are other foods to eat. Exactly what that is, I can't tell you for sure, but I can plug you in this resources so you can have ideas. And then just mix sauce. Like, what's your favorite? What's your favorite meal that has gluten in it? Flavor. This food's gonna make us this, and we think about the long-term impact. And look, you will not have these issues because of this. And if you're ongoingly having dialogue about that, that helps. And then maybe say, okay, this year we'll have these portions, maybe next year we won't have it. But let's say we will. You never want to take something all the way away from anyone. Because I'm just a big child. If you don't give me what I want, when I want it, with it a little bit, yeah, my crunchy food. When I eat yogurt, I put cashews in it. Not because I want cashews, <laughs> but because there's a part of me that if it doesn't have crunch, I'm not eating it. So just playing with the process a little bit, giving people what they really want, but in doses that's appropriate and working with balance. The main thing that I want to share is balance intellectually, what people are trying to feed you, balance physically, and a little process on how to decipher letting you know that there are resources out there that can help you through that journey. And it's worth it. It's worth not setting up someone's pattern to have sickness, but they have to know that. They have to think that. They have to believe that. They have to be a part of that. So dialoguing as you're engaging in that activity will also be helpful. And it's not to say that you're not, but that's a, it's an ongoing thing when we're making change. Change is never hard. For animals to have least resistance, set up the path like dominoes, okay? Maybe you need just two meals per week and say, look, Friday and Monday, we'll do gluten-free. Everything else, okay. Well, that means that that's eight times a month. That means that's 80 times a year that you're no longer doing it. That's pretty good. Next year, if you double that, that's 160. That means in five years that you can almost have every meal no longer sustaining gluten in your diet or your families. That's awesome. If you have a five year kind of transfer rate, that's amazing. So that's possible. But it's just kind of creatively setting up the process and thinking long term about it on how to kind of integrate it instead of trying to do it so quickly. That's kind of our other methodology. Thanks for dialoguing. Does anybody else have? 
have any questions or comments? versus adults who start a gluten-free kind of nutritional plan, right? Okay. So I'm going to do my best, but purposely didn't kind of blog any of the studies because that can go so down kind of a road. And thinking about this being kind of the athletic population in a way, I kind of wanted to leave it a little bit surface but I do have resources for you. So that's one. But I'll go into it a little bit, okay? Most of the research that they've done on teens, because people do research where they make money, or where someone's paying for it, or where there's a real issue. So they have found conclusively, and more research continues to come out about diabetes and autism. Those two big factors. They have not just done a blanketed study to see how a teen feels, but they have done diabetes correlating to ADD and ADHD, diabetes, blood sugar control, and attention. Autism, another attention-oriented idea with food. So, most of the times when, when I think about a teen and how it kind of coordinates to their food, it's how are they most efficient with their energy and how are they low out of control? Basically, how can I control them through their food so we can be a little more sustainable? Does that sound kind of a little bit accurate in the background of your question? So, if it's saying that being gluten-free can help a child focus that's conclusive enough. And if it's showing it in such kind of hardships that it helps focus, that I would think that it would help the everyday child, the everyday teen. I imagine that research will come out soon, and I imagine it coming from Australia, okay? But I can link you to studies uh, where you can read what they've done so far with teens. Okay. Does that answer your question? good to kind of try to figure it out. And that, that's a great path to be on. Unfortunately, I, I don't have kids yet, so I haven't put that whole thing together from a parent kind of filtering it down. <clears throat> I can tell you that the number one way to find out, the cheapest way to know, is to go off gluten for 60 days. tell you something for certain. If you put them on a plant and animal diet based organically, which just means that it has limited chemicals, then you're feeding your child limited chemicals and food that's been around as long as they have. That that is better than any chemical based kind of orientation that you can possibly ask for. I can tell you that absolutely. Now how you do that is worth the research. Okay? Because how you do that and putting that together, that's the value. Knowing whether or not it works, we've survived. You know it works. Whether or not they should or should not have gluten, whether or not they should or should not have alcohol, whether or not they should or should not have caffeine or cigarettes or marijuana or drugs, or like, there's so many should or should not have. Okay? All of those things, people could say, try it, have balance with it, moderate it, okay, all of those. But if you feed them food that has very few chemicals in it, and they build that as a habit as they grow older, and not saying they stay away from the other stuff, but they moderate it, I think they've done a pretty successful job. And probably healthier than most. Because most have health issues or diseases that were enabled by the stresses of their food. Because it's food that your body doesn't know what to do with because it's too new. By too new, I don't mean 